Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number 2 of Ultimate Black Panther, written by Brian Edward Hill. But before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. Now following the tragic events of issue number 1, we pick up with issue number 2, and when we get there, we see T'Challa waking up on the side of his bed. For the last 30 days the people of Wakanda lived in fear. And the reason why Okoye knows about this is because, when she is among them, their people speak and confide in her. But despite what Okoye says, T'Challa was dead set on rooting out the rot from his kingdom, for he wanted all of this to end. But that is where he was mistaken, because T'Challa was under the impression that the people were scared of the war, but in actuality, they were scared of him. Because Okoye goes on to tell her king that over the past 30 days, he has been searching for enemies within his own kingdom. Now this means, T'Challa has been putting his own people behind bars as well as conducting interrogations. T'Challa even went as far as to not allow his people to grieve his father's passing. Now following that truth, T'Challa responds by saying that among his people are servants of their enemy, and what he is doing is what must be done to protect everyone. But that is when Okoye opens up and replies with, his people are grieving and angry. And as for her king, he is angry because he is afraid because deep down all fear is what anger truly is. So with those facts shared, T'Challa snaps back at Okoye by saying, and what am I afraid of? And without missing a beat, Okoye responds by saying, what all men fear, and that is, what they are, will never be good enough. So with the harsh truth delivered, Okoye then goes on to say, your burdens are great, you must honor your father, you must protect your people and your nation. You must be their king and their king warrior because T'Challa is what Wakanda needs. So with those words hitting home, T'Challa gathered his thoughts and told his beloved that he must speak with the Vodokan today for they have counseled for him. Now this threw Okoye off because his newfound closeness with the Vodokan prompted his queen to remind him not to trust them for they serve their prophecies over him. So because of that, it would be in his best interest to not serve them blindly. So with the warning delivered, we fast forwarded to the temple of the Vodokan, and when we got inside, we saw T'Challa face to face with the matron. For the sisterhood had received a vision about T'Challa himself, and in this vision they state, a woman of light will come to him, for both their faiths are intertwined. And because of their faith, they will forge a bond between them made during war. And through this bond, she will give him an heir. The heir that Wakanda has awaited for, for generations. So with the prophecy delivered, T'Challa's eyes shot open as he states, Okoye will give me an heir. And that is when the matron responds by saying, She is close to you. She is your light. So with eyes closed and head bowed, T'Challa states that Okoye is his sanity and he never wanted to be a king of war. But see, destiny cares little for what we want. In fact, destiny doesn't care about them at all. So with that interaction coming to an end, we jump over to a battlefield with the soldiers of Moon Knight, waging war against the fierce Dora Malaji. And while that is going on, we see Shuri overlooking the entire thing from a computer monitor, and she states the Dora Malaji is holding their own, so it's time to turn the tides of war in their favor. And with that statement, she clicks a button which gives her brother, the Black Panther, control over the throne which was a gigantic robotic creature that emerged from the sky, and once it got there, it proceeded to wreak havoc upon the forces of Moon Knight. So as bodies were tossed to and from the battlefield, we see the Dora Malaji standing in surprise, until eventually, they erupted in cheer for their king's victory. So as the cockpit opened to the throne, the Dora Malaji kneeled before their king. So with the battle over, on the next page, we see both Ra and Kanchu having a conversation with a mysterious figure shrouded in light. And according to Kanshu, the stranger's information cost them a victory. But that is when, the mysterious person states that they have already betrayed Wakanda as they continue to betray them now. For they gave entrance to their assassin, and even placed the assassin next to Wakanda's king, which resulted in the death of Tashaka. So with her point made, Kanshu and Ra declare they need information about weaknesses and vulnerabilities in their armaments, for they desire to storm Wakanda itself in order to break T'Challa. So with their conversation coming to an end, the stranger tells the two men that they are their eyes into Wakanda and they do not command them, but they agree that it is time for T'Challa's rule to come to an end. And because of that, the stranger sent the two men a very detailed plan to follow before exiting the call. 
So with that said, we transition over to Wakanda's war room and during this exchange, T'Challa states that every village the Moon Knights have taken is close to a vibranium mine, and following their attacks they never take prisoners or hostages. Now this means, they must be after their resources. Now, this right here is a very big deal, because Shuri brings up that they hide their minds, which means the only way the enemies would have known where they are, is if someone is telling them their location. So with a spy confirmed within their ranks, T'Challa states, the only people he can trust is in this room. And when Shuri asked why would anyone do this, Okoye replied with, because they are not in this room. Because, according to Okoye, a traitor usually wants more than a nation has given them. Which means, that this betrayer will be someone close to them, but not embraced by them. So she encouraged everyone to search their thoughts as she would do the same. So with that realization sinking in, T'Challa reveals that Faxel and Anan have found something that could give them an advantage. For they believe they have found where Kanchu and Ra are hiding. Now the way they did this was by figuring out Kanchu and Ra were hiding the power sources while they moved from place to place. But when you cannot see evidence of your prey, you can find evidence of their camouflage. Because the two spies noticed the animal's migration has changed in this certain location. Because all the beasts have been avoiding this place for the last few days, despite nothing visibly changing from their perspective. So with that information given, T'Challa tells his war council, he will see this place tonight alone, and as for his two royal spies, he tasked them with keeping his family safe, for Faxel to protect the queen and Anand to protect his sister. So with his royal decree made, the Black Panther turned to walk out the room while saying, if the beasts are frightened of this place, then tonight one panther will not be. So as the sun goes down and darkness covers the land, T'Challa does exactly what he said he would do, and sets off for Kanchu and Ross' location. And while he flew above the canopy completely cloaked, Shuri provided aerial support for this mission. And one of his last orders issued was for Shuri to send the Dora Malaji to his location if he manages to track down the Moon Knight's forces. But just as that order was given a strange twist and events went down, for the king's signal was lost as the craft experienced some technical difficulties. So with smoke and flames erupting from the vessel, the ship descended from the sky and violently crashed into the tree line below. So with the vehicle destroyed, the Black Panther jumped out and proceeded to try to contact Shuri, but in a shocking twist, lights emerged around our king. As the Moon Knight forces emerged with weapons drawn, so with the Black Panther completely surrounded, the enemy proceed to open fire on their prey, peppering him with bullets from all angles. So due to the sheer number of bullets impacting his armor, T'Challa eventually dropped to his knees. So as the onslaught continued around him, clouds started to form in the sky above, as a gigantic thunderbolt ripped out from the sky and descended to its targets below. So with the enemies defeated, T'Challa sat there in disbelief as he turned his gaze to the sky above. For he noticed a woman floating down from the sky. But it wasn't just any woman, no, this woman was none other than Storm, a woman made of light. So with that said, this issue number two of the ultimate Black Panther comes to an end. So with that out there, if you want to stay in the loop about any individual storyline, then how about you hop over to the playlist section down below or in the link cards above to get all caught up on the ultimate universe. So with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next review.